This is the Louis T Network. Then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs. In the lab. Who else can it be? For me, you're me. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room, of course. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. Divisional round of the postseason has arrived. First game in the books, New England Patriots. Take care of business. What else did you expect? I mean, seriously, 27 to 20 over the Cat the City Chiefs. Five straight AFC Championship appearances. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. You guys should just go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and do mine right now. I'm gonna bow down to the Patriots and give them their just due because what they've done, what we've watched is history. And I've talked about Brady, I've talked about Belichick, I've talked about the B&B winning factory. And yes, I know there's a lot of Patriot haters out there. That's fine. I don't have a problem with you guys hating out there, but pay homage, respect this, okay? Respect what you're witnessing because it's greatness at its highest level, okay? Please do that. You can hate all you want. Just make sure you attach that respect right at the end, okay? Patriots do it again. And first of all, if you're not a Kansas City Chiefs fan, and you expected anything other than the outcome that we got, shame on you. Shame on you. Because that means you haven't been paying attention to football. You really thought that the Kansas City Chiefs were going to waltz into Foxborough and beat Tom Brady and Bill Belichick with Brady having all of his stuff back. I told you if Amendola and Edelman and Gronk were all on the field, Brady was going to be just fine. And I felt like it was deja vu all over again. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on, but let me just jump into this real quick. I don't want to make this longer than I have to. Patriots came out, got the football first, went right down the field, 11 plays, 80 yards. Brady did not hand the football off one single time on that possession. They move it down the field. Edelman was huge in his return on that first possession. You knew what kind of a night it was going to be. Just off of that first possession, it was going to be one of those, hey, Brady, you don't have to turn around and hand the ball off tonight if you don't want to type of nights. And you knew Edelman was going to get it 11 or 12 times in terms of targets, and he was going to catch 8 to 10 balls. He caught 10 on the night. You knew Gronk was going to get busy. He had a couple catches on that possession, including a huge third down grab. You know what kind of a night it was gonna be just off of the first drive. They go down the field. What a throw by Brady. God damn, Tom Brady's good, man. He's the best. And I I, I always used to give that to Peyton, man. No, 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 it's Brady, man. It's Tom Brady. Did you see the touchdown throw to Gronk on the first possession? Back shoulder fade. Did you see that? Damn, you can't throw that any better than that. It was a couple of throws on the night where I'm like, man, that's some pinpoint accuracy, man. Literally. I don't know of three other quarterbacks in the league that can throw some of the passes I saw Tom Brady fit in the zone coverage on the night. Man, come on. Stop kidding me, man. Stop playing. Touchdown on that first possession. Move it down later on in the half. 98-yard 11-play drive by Brady. More passing of the football. I mean, it was ridiculous. He got surgical on these boys at one point. Completed like 11 or 12 straight passes. And this is the difference in the first half, and to me, in the game, and I talked about this, the Chiefs have two opportunities. You got uh, Chiefs on an 11-play, 72-yard drive, settle for a field goal, okay? Needed to get in the end zone there, got a field goal. You got the Chiefs with an opportunity. They pin the Patriots deep in their own territory, force a three and out in a punt. To get the football, Frankie Hammond Jr. with a beautiful punt return of about 19 yards or so. Sets them up at the Patriots 35 yard line in prime position to at least get a field goal if nothing else. These boys go three and out and go backwards and got a punt. You want to win on the road in Foxborough? You got to take advantage of opportunities that are in front of you and the Chiefs simply did not do that on this night. At least you get that field goal though later on in the half and you get the football after halftime so you're thinking, okay, 14 to six going to half, we got a shot. Let's see what they're made of. They move it down the field, coming out of the halftime break. You're feeling good about this possession. And the reason now Davis hasn't been in the game for the Chiefs since the injury to Jamal Charles is simply because they know he has a penchant for fumbling. His middle name is Fumble. If you, if you want to go check it, go look it up. His middle name is Fumble. Okay? Niall Fumble Davis. 
And even though he has a fumble this season, it's because they haven't been giving it to him so he can fumble. They just said, hey, you run back the kicks. You do that now. We're going to let uh, Chuck Hantrick and uh, Spencer Ware do all the carrying of the football. We're going to let them do the heavy lifting. You just do the special teams thing. You can't hurt us as much over there. And so uh, they put him in the game. And I, I said this last week. Sometimes you just got to give credit to the defense. He tried to cover it up. In his defense, he put two hands on the football. They, they just made a play. Chandler Jones reached his hand in the cookie jar and said, oh, <laughs> found the cookie and pulled out a cookie, man. Yum, yum, eat them up. Yum, yum, eat them up. Sometimes you just got to give credit to the defense, man. They made a play. Went in, reached the cookie jar, pulled a cookie out, fumbled on the ground, scoop it up. Patriots football game was never the same after that. And, uh, Patriots go down the field, they get another touchdown, 21 to six. I will give the Chiefs credit, they could have crumbled in this game. Alex Smith, with a Houdini-like play, escapes the sack of three different Patriots, weaves his way in and out of traffic, outside of the pocket, and locates Jason Avant on a key third down. Because if he, that was third down and long, if he gets sacked there, this game's over. Brady and company are going to get great field position. They're going to go right back down the field. They're going to score another touchdown. It'll be 28 to 6 at that point. And you can go ahead and cancel the Chiefs in this football game. Instead, Alex Smith creates, and I talked about that on the pregame for this football game, is keeping Alex Smith contained and not letting him outside of the pocket. He used his legs a couple of times. None bigger than that particular play where he used his legs to set up his arm down the field. And Jason Avant, I've always loved Jason Avant as a third option on anybody's football team. I think he has outstanding hands. You saw it in this game. This goes back to the Philadelphia Eagles days and Andy Reid trusts Jason Avant for good reason. You saw him pluck the football out of the air on numerous occasions in this game, making some outstanding catches. One on a fourth down where it was just a hell of a catch out away from his body. How he caught that, don't ask me. That play was a very highly contested ball, a 50-50 ball up in the air. He went up and got it. And Jason Avant can make some plays, and you saw it in this game. And Alex Smith started to trust him more and more as the game wore on. And that was the guy he was looking for in pressure pack situations. But they ended up getting a touchdown out of that possession. And that was a huge touchdown because it, it, it prolonged the game. This game would have been done had Alex Smith taken that sack. Instead, he prolonged the game. But it was inevitable this defense could not get stopped. You had Marcus Peters with an opportunity to get an interception. You had uh, Tom Bahali late in the ball game when the Chiefs needed the football back, dropping in the zone coverage. Brady never sees him fall foul. It, it, it was a hot sauce ball, man. That ball was 98 miles an hour. You're not going to ask a defensive end slash outside linebacker to, to corral that one. Right off his arm, you know it wasn't their night because it went right into the arms of Julian Edelman and gives them the first down that subsequently ends the ball game. But you had opportunities in this football game. The Chiefs botched clock management late. They took their precious time on like a six minute drive late in the game to score a touchdown and just one of the worst ways to handle the, the clock at the end of the game. But nonetheless, they weren't going to win anyway. Chiefs lose 27 to 20. Patriots get it done. And it's what you come to expect from them. Brady, and, and look, I said it was like deja vu. Here's why. Another thing for the Chiefs, you can't miss opportunities. You look at the opportunities that the uh, Chiefs had in this ball game. I talked about the drop interceptions by Marcus Peters. And even Sean Smith had an opportunity to get one early in the game. That was kind of tough. It, it carries off of Edelman right into his arms, but he's not able to corral because he wasn't thinking about catching football. He was thinking about making a tackle. So, look, they had opportunities, though, okay? The now Davis fumble, the drive that stalled out after going 11 plays and having an opportunity inside the 10-yard line, having a set of four field goal. Opportunities were there. The, the drive where you get the ball at the 35-yard line to start, all you need is four first downs and you got a touchdown and you literally go backwards and have to putt. Opportunities were there, Chiefs didn't take advantage. Deja vu. When you get in the red zone, you gotta cash in and get seven. Cairo Santos can't be the MVP of this game. If he is, and this turns into another Cincinnati Bengals game, like he did earlier in the season when he kicked seven field goals to account for all 21 of your points, you're going to lose this football game. You get the football in the end zone like you did against the Texans last week, and you should be just fine. If you stall out, you gotta kick a bunch of field goals, you're going to lose. You know the mantra, you know the motto, but for those of you who don't, field goals don't win games, touchdowns do. You kick field goals and settle for them instead of getting in the end zone, Tom Brady is going to make you pay. 
I told you touchdowns instead of field goals. You know the mantra. You know the motto. Field goals don't win games. Touchdowns do. And you allow yourself to kick field goals in a game when you knew you had to score touchdowns. I said, if the Patriots get over 20, you lose. If you keep them under 20, you win. Well, they got 27, you lose the football game. Deja vu. Now, offensively, you got to take advantage of every single opportunity that comes your way. First and foremost, can't turn it over. And I know you only had one turnover last week with Alex Smith. That can't happen. This week, you got to stay clean, which is something that the Chiefs normally do. They need to do that this week. No turnovers. I told you, you had to be better than you were last week. And I said, hey, you only turned it over one time last week. Alex Smith had one interception last week. I said, you can't do that this week. You can't have any turnovers. Well, now Davis fumbles. That turnover changed this ball game. I said you had to be better than you were last week, and you couldn't do it. You had to be better. Deja vu. I see Brady throwing it 45, maybe even 50 times in this game, if need be. I told you Brady might throw it 45 or 50 times in this game. I saw it coming a mile away. Why try to run with this Patriots offense? Doesn't really have a running game, which to speak of. And oh yeah, by the way, the Kansas City Chiefs stopped the run. So why even do it? Send Brady out there, put them, put these guys out wide, empty sets and just let Brady pick his receiver that he wants to throw to and let the Kansas City Chiefs pick their poison, okay? Who do you want, Edelman? Who do you want, Amendola? Who do you want, Gronk? What do you want? Even I'll sprinkle in a little bit of James White or Brandon LaFell on you, man. What you want? I mean, they got options for Brady to get the football to and he's gonna use every single one of them. So if you take one away, throw it to somebody else. Doesn't really matter. That was going to be the type of night. I've seen this movie before. I told you already. Patriots win every single time against inferior opponents like the Chiefs. And no disrespect to the Chiefs. They got to the divisional round. This was a good football team. They got hot, but they, they hadn't been here before. And without Macklin, I told you this was gonna be hard for you to get 24 points, which I told you was gonna be necessary for you to win if you let the Patriots over 20. I said, I don't see you getting to 24 because you don't have enough offensive weapons. Albert Wilson is nice. Travis Kelsey is great, but there's not enough of that stuff on your football team without Jeremy Macklin, you have been reduced to the team that you had last year. Not enough. And so, your end result, Patriots get it done 27 and 20. They move on to the AFC Championship game for the NFL record setting fifth consecutive time. Big ups to the Patriots, man. My goodness, this is the level of dominance that we've never seen in the league before. And I told you, we got Brady Manning, Park, what is it? Where are we on? 17? Chapter 17 now? We got it coming. Don't you worry. Football gods are going to bless us with one more Peyton Manning. Tom Brady matchup. You get ready. It's coming. AFC Championship game. My, my words. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab. We'll come back and join me as I continue to break down here. Hand up! National Football League. Chiefs didn't get any pressure on Brady. That was the key to the game. Gotta hit Brady. I don't remember Brady getting hit maybe what one time and that was on a personal foul when he rolled out of the pocket. I don't remember him taking any shots. M maybe the one where he dived towards the end zone for a touchdown. Maybe that was the hardest time he was hit all game long. There was no pressure. And when you don't get pressure on Tom Brady, bad things happen. <laughs> Ask the Kansas City Chiefs. See you next time. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs.